Today we'll be working on the skill called close reading. This means developing a deep understanding and a precise interpretation of a literary passage, and it's based first and foremost on the words themselves. And then from the words, we call larger themes and ideas, which means a thought process of moving from small details to larger issues. And we're going to be using the first chapter of The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. So let's look at the first paragraph. So what, what stands out here for words are sad colored, gray, studded, and spikes. And so these, this throng of bearded men are all dressed alike, and they're dressed in sad gar colored garments that are gray, so they're colorless, they're dull. This is a sullen group. And they're standing in front of a very heavily timbered door. So you get this feeling of heaviness. So the tone being set is heavy, sullen, and then the studded spikes make it also unwelcoming. So that first sentence, which is the first paragraph, <laughs> sets the tone for, the, for sullen, unwelcoming, and heavy. In the next paragraph, the words that we see a lot of are related to cemetery and prison. We have prison house, burial ground, grave, sepulchers, um, jail. So we have all these very unpleasant places that are being brought up and lots of unpleasant adjectives, darker, beetle-browed, gloomy. Beetle-browed means sullen. And then we have ugly, unsightly. We again have that feeling of heaviness, ponderous. So look at all these brown, negative words. The other group of words that, that we see a lot of here are related to age. We have weather stains age itself, rust, antique, and never to have known a youthful era. So we're definitely getting another, a second sense here of old. So not just sullen and gloomy and heavy, but also very old. And we'll see where that takes us in a minute. We also have here the black flower of civilized society. It's a metaphor and it tells us what it's a metaphor for, a prison. So again, we have this negativity, but here we have a turning point. So after this is mentioned, there's a shift in the tone and we have a rose bush. The rose bush has a beautiful red color to it. We have the summer month mentioned, June. We have these delicate gems, a metaphor for the flowers on the rose bush. And we have a nice fragrance and beauty and so we have so that's we have these more you know that I've highlighted in pink these more positive words um, kept alive just want to say something about that because up we're talking about cemeteries up, up top and prisons and you don't really think of people being alive in those um, so here's a contrast the rose bush is alive and it's you know, more fresh compared to this older prison. And it symbolizes a sweet moral blossom and it's a relief to things that are dark. And then another important line here, Anne Hutchinson, who is she? Because she is the origin of the rose bush. It sprung up under her footsteps. So the gems on that rose bush, the flowers on that rose bush are coming from her. What gems could Anne Hutchinson be giving, um, giving us? So if you look her up, she has she's liberal, more liberal than the Puritans were. She had these new ideas, and they contrasted with Puritan views. So from looking at all of this ugliness before, of, you know, represented by the prison, and all this pink, you know, words represented by the rose bush. We have the prison representing the Puritan values, um, being outdated, 
being severe and heavy and sullen compared and contrasted with the rose bush representing Anne Hutchinson's ideas that are more pleasant, that are gems, that have beauty, that are alive. So from this, we can actually tell that, you know, that this book is probably going to be about Puritan values becoming outdated and being supplanted by new ideas. And then from that, you could, pro you could come up with a thesis statement that you could do a reading response for. And so what I want you to do is read chapter two, do a close reading. I want to see the notes from your close reading, and I want you to have come up with a thesis statement. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.